Where'd your name come from? Barbie. Just a name, man. It just grow with you, you know. As a kid, you know, just something that people just call you, just pick up on certain things. Everybody got them, you know. As you go through your childhood, it starts to stick with you. It just came along, you know. Just a St. Louis little thing, tied along, you know. Where you from? St. Louis, Missouri, man. Middle of the map, middle of the trap, man. You already know. Salute to the city. What's your opinion of the state of rap music right now in St. Louis? In St. Louis? I feel like um, everybody just rapping and um, telling their story the way that they, I guess, that they experienced life or the way that they grew up in their chapter. I mean, it's all different genre. I can't just say it's we all the same or we all in the same lane. I think just rap music, period, just kind of integrated, but Barbie, I'm, I'm a sauce for you real quick, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm spill it real, you'll feel it. You know, like I ain't the most boy for boy rapper, but it's real, you gonna feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people say they real, a lot of people say that they got that, or they do this and they do these things. But like, you, you really feel me though. St. Louis, man, 100, man, middle of the city. Give me a tour of the city of St. Louis for someone that's never been there before. Let's start with the food. Favorite food spot in the city? Favorite food spot in the city? I mean, it's variety. You know, it all depends on what you like. We like, we famous for Chinaman, Emo's Pizza, Lee's Chicken. You know, they don't got that everywhere. Um, me personally, I just like to, I like the home cook meal, like my Duke. Like, I eat our mama kitchen, you know what I'm saying? Relatives kitchen, like my people, they, pretty much everybody in St. Louis famous for cooking, period. Just not even the restaurant spot. So like, if you close to somebody, you want to get that hospitality, that good, good, good food, you know, good fried fish, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might want to rub shoulders with somebody in the city that can really just take you to the crib and they whip something for you. That's, that's my best, you know what I'm saying? I recommend, my recommendation for you. What's your favorite dish your mom's cook? Your mom cooks. Uh, we got this pasta we call muscatelli. You know, it's just like uh, noodles, cheese, meat. It's kind of like a lasagna, but not so much as with the long legs. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a type noodle, type pasta, a lot of meat, a lot of cheese. It's bomb, dog. It's one. Now, what about the nightlife? Favorite strip club in the city? I don't really jam the strip clubs in my city, man. I mean, we limited. We just got two. That's, that's the east side, you know, that's across that bridge. And St. Louis is just, you know what I'm saying? Big up to the girls to get their money and not knocking no hustle, but you know, it's, it's, it's not a strip club city to, to pursue, you know what I'm saying? Like you wanna go see some things or something, I just recommend you probably go to the outskirts, but. You know, big up the bottoms up in the slip, man. You know what I'm saying? It's the trenches, man. That's what we all stand for, man. Salute to the city, man. Are those topless or full nude? Hey, it goes down, you know. Hey, full nude, you know. Real deal, holy fear. No play play. Now, what about regular nightclubs? Favorite regular nightclub in the city? I don't really get out too much, but in my younger days, well, I'm, I'm young. I ain't going to say that much, but... In my city, you kind of outgrow certain environments, so I just got more attached to, you know, putting on the out scene, or I do things when I'm more so in and out of town than just doing the, you know, the local. It's just like the young boy movement right now, but I guess they got like, I would say law for HG or law, or I'm, I'm not too quite frequent with the, you know what I'm saying? I don't really get out too much in the nightlife, but I salute to all the promoters and they put on for the city. Boy 2, Qtopia, you know what I'm saying? Little chill spot, St. Louis, happy hour, you know what I'm saying? Just like, we, we, we pretty much just relax at the bars and stuff. We play the bars, man. We don't really do the club for real. Now we talked about the uh, food a little bit, the nightlife. Anything else that stick out to you? First time someone visiting St. Louis? First time for any, like um, a visitor to the city? I say uh, you can check out Ballpark Village, you know, you can check out the zoo. We got one of like the famous zoo, you know what I'm saying, in, in the United States. Like our zoo is real popular. Um, 
I don't know, man. Downtown, pretty much, if you're a baseball fan or something like that, you can come kick it, you know, enjoy that. Um, got the Orch. I mean, like a lot of people like the tour, tourists like the Orch and um, just stuff like that, man. It's it's cool, peaceful things you can do in the city, but St. Louis is just kind of one of those places, like, it's limited, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's small, it's limited, so it's not too much to expect and not to expect, you know. Have you ever been inside the arch? Me personally, I never rode the arch, later, you know what I'm saying, my whole life just, it's kind of like one of those things, people that live in New York, they probably never been to the Statue of Liberty in the inside, like it's just one of those things, like you don't kind of pursue, because you be there, you know, you just see it, it's a day-to-day thing, you know, field trip or something, you know. Now, what about the lingo? What are some terms or some phrases one might hear in STL right about now? I mean, the, li- the lingo, that's like a, that's kind of like a code of honor to me. Like, with me and my guys, we, we just, we speak amongst each other with certain words, and I can't say what everybody's saying, what they don't say, but, you know, jamming might be a popular one, or, you know, goddamn me is a popular term. You know, we like, we real country, we Midwest, but we like in our own type of lane. I mean, lingo, it's gonna rotate. It's not a, it's not a solid, you know, everybody just do their own thing. You got people that bite off of bits and pieces here and then we put our spin on certain things. But, you know, if you meet somebody from St. Louis, you pretty much gonna know that they from St. Louis or they not from where you from by the way they talk, you know. Now, like those two words you just mentioned, or those phrases you just mentioned, how would you use those in a sense? Like, give me some more meaning on. With jamming, I, so, perfect example with jamming. I call bruh, if he call me, if I'm at the spot, or if I'm out and about in the building, and he say, hey, how it's looking in there? Is it packed or is it not packed? Is it moving? Yeah, moving another lingo too. I say, man, bruh, it's jamming. So jamming mean like it's jam packed, it's jumping, you know, get her ASAP or goddamn me, it just be like a, I'm, I wouldn't say it's a noun or nothing like that, but it's just like a substitute. So I'd be like, I was at the goddamn me car wash and then my phone started ringing. I couldn't leave from there, you know what I'm saying? Because they were so packed. You know, it's just like a substitute word that you'll use in between the things, you know. Like, I was riding down the street then, goddamn me, the police got behind me. I jumped in the other lane, you know. It's just lingo, man. It's just just something that we picked up on as kids, man. St. Louis, man. And what about, what about events? Are there any, are there any important events you might recommend someone go visit St. Louis for? Like, for example, in New Orleans, Mardi Gras is a huge ordeal. Yeah, man, shit, I mean. To each his own, there's a lot going on in St. Louis. I mean, it's it's different little things. We got little fashion shows and art galleries and boutiques and, you know, barber battles. We do all, a lot of little different things, man. It's just not so much it's on a big radar scale, but if you come to the city, it's, they have certain things that go on on a weekly basis, you know. For us, I mean, people that just trying to get ahead. It's, it's people, we get out and we mingle a little bit, but, um, May Day Parade used to be a big thing, Annie Malone, you know, when we was coming up, but times kind of changed a little bit. We used to just get out on Sundays and do the pork before the violence got, like, totally out of control. But, man, it's just, it's the city. It's just what you make it, though. If you're a tourist, there's plenty of things for you to do. So, like, I mean, like, it's just, you got to kind of do your homework and everything ain't for everybody. It's like one of those type places. Everything ain't for everybody. So like what you might like, I might not like. Or what I like, you might like, not like, you know? And are those festivities still going on or are those no more? That yeah, let's still, yeah, let's still happen, you know? And what are those, parades or? Yeah, mm-hmm. like a matter of parade, man, it's still going on from time to time, you know, Andy Malone. And it just switched locations, but, um, you know, City just grow and change over due time, you know, certain things, certain crafts, certain genres, certain eras of people, you know. It's just not the same like that no more. Now let's take it back a little bit. What type of student were you in school? Nah, you're gonna hit me with the question. Uh, school, man, I was like 
pretty chill cat, man. I did my work, but uh, you know, I was from the era like we used our hands. We fought a lot. I fought a lot, you know. Gave niggas the raccoon shits on the regular. I was one of them type guys, you know, hundred hundred pounds, but shit, I take down anything. But that was just like going through, just coming up, you know. It's just like one of those things, and I miss them days when we used to use our hands and shit like that. You know, like kids growing up, they ain't nothing but cowards these days, you know. Put the gun down, son. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 100. Jobs you had growing up, if any? Oh, man, shit, I was a jack of all trade. I was just a hustler straight out the door. You know, I used to do like little, like, little side jobs with my dad and shit, man. Like, he was just like an eye hustler, you know. Whatever he had going, I pretty much just tagged along with him, sucked up the game on construction, you know, landscaping, and watching my granddaddy work on cars. So I, I pretty much learned how to do a lot of things at a young age because, shit, my daddy and them did a lot, you know what I'm saying, just to juggle and balance out. But um, my first serious job, I was probably like uh, 14 years old. I think it was like a and I used to jam at the little hot dog stand in the mall, man. And shit, I wasn't even old enough to work there. I lied about my you know, birth certificate just to help, you know, my Duke out around the crib, man, and help balance out around her. It was important to me, man, you know, like family important to me. That's all you got sometimes. So I got out there and I did what I had to do. And um, shit, that was a job. And I worked Pizza Hut. I had Pizza Hut. I was jamming her. I was on house arrest. So shit, I used to work there just to get out the house, man. You know what I'm saying? Like just to get out the house just for, you know, four hours, five hours out of the day. So, them was memory, them memories to me, like classy shit, man. But I actually worked, so I ain't gonna be the one to say just like, hey, I got out there and hustled. I hustled because I had to, you know what I'm saying? And we hustled because we did what we had to do to hustle. Like a lot of these boys, they say they hustle, but they just, they imitate. They not originators, like we originators, you know? I know a few in the city that's really originators and salute to those ones, you know what I'm saying? And it's only a few of us left. But um yeah, that was pretty much that coming up, man. We did what we had to do though. We went to shine to work, no job, no McDonald's, no nothing. Whether you hustled outside of them jobs or you hustled at them jobs, we still had jobs and we still hustled because that's what hustlers do. You know, we gon we gon' build. Any crazy customer stories dealing with any of those jobs? Nah, I can't really say, man, like, you know, I just, I was just doing what I had to do, you know what I'm saying, at them times, man, like, I just, just working, man, trying to get ahead and, you know, balance out, but, nah, I really not, I, I really never witnessed nothing too crazy or nothing like that, you know, everything was always chill, cool, cool environment. What's the worst thing you put your parents through? I never put my parents through nothing worse, like, if we went through something, we went through it together. That's what family do. So like, I can't say that I put my mom through something or my dad through something. Like, we went through things together and we grew from certain things. Whether it's with jail or, you know, shootings or whatever. You know, I'm gonna I'm a put that on the leash, but we've been through certain, we've been through a lot of things and it's just not my household. It's just how the city structured, like, you know, everybody got one in their family or everybody family been through something. So, you know, we just grew through a lot of crazy situations, man. Some serious and some minor, but that's what made me who I am today. And I love them to death, you know what I'm saying? They installed a lot of good things in me. And I took them through some things, but shit, we grew from those things, you know? And they proud of me, shit. I'm pushing right now, going hard with this music. What's your message to the youth? My message to the youth, man, to my young kings, my young queens, just believe in God first, keep your circle small, and if you got somebody that's good to you, male or female, that hold you down for, for what you don't got now, hold on to that and take that with you and, um, you know, Stay in your lane, just believe in what you do. Don't be no following. If you a leader of your pack, lead your pack positive. Don't rub, rub, only good energy rub off just as well as negative energy rub off. So 
if you a, if you a male and you ain't about shit, your female not gonna be about shit. And if you a female and you not about shit, your kids not gonna be about shit. So lead by example at all times. This is not a race thing or nothing. Just say, this to everybody, you know. Lead by example, man, and be positive and keep a positive circle, and you'll be successful. You know. That's my message to the youth. Is there a meaning behind your hair? Nah, man, ain't no meaning behind no hair. I cut this hair if I cut this hair if I had to in a heartbeat. You know, I move for real. We real movers. It's not a um. It's not a defiant. You know, no tattoo, no gold teeth, no hair, no nothing. This don't define me. I'm just B. I'm a BB with a bald head, big bird, bald, whatever. I'm just B. I'm a cool dude, man. It's Barry B, man. Let's talk music a little bit. Jane. What do you hate the most about the music industry? What's your biggest pet peeve? I really, I really can't say I hate, cause I hate is such a strong word. What I dislike, man, is um, you don't get a chance to grow with the artists that's coming out today. Like, they put out music so rapidly, and there's so many artists that come out on the sites, like it's not a leash on things. Like, everybody just releasing, releasing, releasing. It's hard to focus on one artist, like, Let's just take it back a bit. Before mixtapes, I say you had A Ball, MJG, you had Scarface, you had your TI, you had your Trick Daddy, you had your East Coast, would it be probably Rough Riders, you know, had a good run, Jay Z, you know, um, Midwest, Bone Thugs. I'm just saying, you got a chance to actually grow and appreciate, you know what I'm saying, the CDs before the mixtape. So, fast forward to the mixtape era, I like the old Yo Gotti. The old T.I., the old Young Dro, you know, um, shit, there's so many. I don't leave nobody out. Um, it's a couple, couple new cats I jam with now that I like to see grow instead of just putting out so much music rapidly. Old Future, you know, Mercy 1000, he was really, he was really kicking game. They was really giving game and taking their time and going in their booth, man. They was really, like, some of that music, I can just say, got me through old Jeezy, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jeezy, man. Like, some of that music, I was going through certain things in my life, and I actually grew with them as they grew. Now, you can't do that because the sites is over flooded. You know what I'm saying? It's, they dropping music randomly this month, next month. The music ain't even holding that quality and the value. It don't hold no value right now. Music really don't hold the value that an artist can really put out, man. I just, I liked it back then because you can actually grow with the artist. Now you see a cat drop a mixtape, he already sitting in the Bentley. Or he drop a mixtape, he already, panor he in the panorama. He drop a mixtape, he already got a million dollars. He drop a mixtape, he a million dollars in the bank, like, you gotta understand, man, everyday life, people don't have those things, man. That's your fan base, the struggle. You know what I'm saying? Real people, bro, that's what I represent. People wanna grow with you. You don't wanna shit on the people that support you. People wanna grow with you, man. That's how you make your money, you know? That's just what I miss about the game, but salute to everybody doing their thing, but I just think music had better quality when it was coming out on a timeline even with the DJs, even with the producers, you know, you, you go make a beat for 10 cats this week, or you go DJ, you go drop three mixtapes this week. It was a point in time when you checked for a DJ to drop a mixtape, and you was like, oh, you knew it was gonna be some shit because that DJ stamped it, you know what I'm saying? But now, you see that DJ stamped it, and he put out a bullshit ad, like he ain't even, it's more about the money, you know what I'm saying? Like, people just tripping out the dollar of things. They ain't tripping out the talent of things. Like, if you ain't got it, I'm not putting my name behind it. If you ain't got it, I'm, you won't get a feature from me. I'm going to just be honest with you. You ain't got to work with me. I ain't got to work with you. You can feel like my shit might be shot to shit. Or I can feel like your shit ain't good as shit. But at the end of the day, if it's not going to make money, it don't make sense. So I just feel like people got so caught up in the money and the social media that they lost the value of their craft, man. That's why I'm at with it. Do you think it's gonna get worse before better? And what do you think can be done to fix this, if any? Hey man, I just think everything temporarily. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is always gonna revolve, you know? Like, hey, 
You just gotta grind on the different platform. Gotta gotta grind a little harder. You gotta figure out. It's just like the streets, man. You gotta make a way. You know, at one point in time, everybody was hustling this, and then the game switched to that. You won't have to start selling this. You know what I'm saying? So like, you gotta figure out your own lane. I mean, like, hey. It's a plus and a negative. It's just about what you do with your shit. Like me and my fans or people that support Bird B, I want my people to grow with me, man. I don't want to grow past them or shit or shame on them. I want them people to support me, grow with them, man. I come from where y'all come from, man. Salute to the struggle, man. Everybody in it, man. Real spill. Top three things you need in the studio. And top three things I need in there. Yo, man, is um, when I walk through that door, that, that energy got to be right. If the energy ain't right, I can't work. You know, that's just for us facility, management, engineer, everything, man, just to set up the sound. You know, the sound, gotta, the sound is the most important. You know, the system, your speakers, whatever, you know what I'm saying, we finna jam on, it got to be correct. The engineer got to have good energy. And pretty much just that, man, I'm going to vibe out, man. You know, like I'm natural. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to spill how I spill. But those three things, man, I got to have those three things at all time. And they not guaranteed to you at all time because you can walk in certain facilities and people give a shit who you are because you don't have a name yet. That don't mean you're not nothing, but the energy don't get aroused like that for you. But you got to learn to work against the grain too, but... I mean, them my three. Just good engineer, good energy, good sound, man. Craziest studio story, if you have one. I really ain't experienced one yet, man. You know, everything pretty much be strictly business around me. I don't really do the, you know, the fucking off or the goofing off in the yo. You know, I get in, I just jam, I get straight to work, man. And, that's just how I rock, pretty much. I ain't really experienced nothing too wild or nothing, because I try to focus up and use my time, you know. It's, it's efficient and, you know, effective as I'm there, you know. Like she said, I really never experienced nothing too crazy. Not shit, man, you know. What's the realest song you ever wrote so far in your whole catalog of music? I really um I don't really write songs, but the really, really song that I, I I I vibed out on man is this song. I mean, like I got pretty much all of them, man. They be coming from different places. It just be different energy that I be feeding off on different beats, man. And eighty-five percent of it, you know, is is real fact. You know, I be spilling on, but I really can't say I got a favorite, man, cause I. Should I go in there and I give it ten times hundred to every, each and every one? If it's, if I don't do ten times hundred, I'm not keeping it. I don't want to hurt. I'm I'm trashing this shit, you know. But I don't really have too many of those nights. But I really can't say, man. You know, I like them all though. I put my all in everything. Risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took in your music career so far? Man, just risk versus reward. It just stand down and stand up, basically, you know. It's an investment. And it ain't no rights and no wrongs in this shit. It ain't no ins and no outs. It ain't no blueprint rolled out to say, this is what's going to lead you to a record label. This is what's going to lead you to an independent order success. This is what's going to lead you to arena sellout. Or this is what's going to lead you to just basically getting booked by local promoters, man. I mean... I just stay down, man, and, and I invest in myself. I don't ask for no handouts. I never did. I always, I just stay down, man, you know. If you're going to get money, do something with it, you know what I'm saying, productively. And then it's just like I tap into this music. So the risk versus the reward is it's just basically it's a time process. It's all about your timing. You don't want to miss your time on her, so you got to stay consistent. So that's the risk versus the reward in her. You can't stop working, man. You got to stay consistent. I don't care if it's recording, interviews, blogs, mixtape slots, mixtapes, video. Man, you got to stay working. You got to stay ahead of the race because it's people's attention span is very short. That's the risk versus the reward for real. It's the attention span nowadays. It's very short, man. You got to stay on your shit. What are your keys to success? 
my keys to success, man, is um, keeping God first for real, you know. Staying humble to myself, man. Staying humble with my team. And just keep pushing, man. Believing in my, believing what I believe in, man. Like, no matter what nobody believe in or who don't believe in me, I just keep going, man. I'm jamming, you know. That's the keys to success, man. Solid team, solid foundation. Not a big circle. It could be a Cheerio, but just the solid ones around you. No negative energy. That's the key to success, man. So what you got going on right now? Shit, what I got going on now, Smiles, man. I'm working on, um, actually I got like three mixtapes done already. I'm finna get ready to drop one called Salute to the Struggle, man. Well put together project, crazy, man, you know. A lot of, um, a lot of emotion, a lot of realness, you know. It's, 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 it's gonna be crazy, probably dropping like March, man. End of March, 1st of April. Ain't no definite date on it, but be on the look on that on that. And I got this single I'm working right now, man, called Dinner. Going crazy, man, getting a little BDS in. I'm thankful for that. Hit the top 200 charts a couple weeks ago, national. You know, digital tracker, so y'all check for that, man. And promoters, man, be on the lookout for the kid, man. Book me now, not later, I'm telling you, man. Finna run it up through the roof, man, for real.